having something like a Sawyer water filter system, even if you're on a budget, all right, 30, 40 bucks, and you can have a nice system all set up and ready to go, and you don't have to worry about it. You can filter water and clean it. And then if you really wanted to, after you did that, you can always boil the water. And this way, then you can turn around and you can take that and you can use it for drinking, for cooking, for whatever it may be. Maybe you have to clean a wound. You see, think people don't think about these type of things. Having a Coleman stove is another great addition to your prepping. Does this way here? If something happens and the power does go out, we have brownouts, we have all this type of stuff. They're predicting that this year. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? Can you cook? A basic Coleman stove sets you back about 70 bucks. I gave one away just a few weeks ago. And, you know, the, the person said she loved it. So, you know, I mean... I'm trying to give away some good prizes too on this channel to help people out that, you know, it, it, their survival, you know, because a lot of people have to really realize that there is more than just putting up food. Food is a beautiful thing. Yes. But when you talk about prepping, you know, and the thing of it is folks, a lot of people think, when you mention the word prepper or I'm prepping, this is what a lot of people are scared of because the conception of this country and a prepper, mark my words, all right, is everybody thinks of the TV show, The Doomsday Preppers. Now, I watched that show. It was quite interesting. You know, these people had food put away for God knows how many years. You know, but that's what people think. They, if you tell them you're a prepper, that's the first thing that comes into their mind more than likely is, oh, the doomsday preppers. Yeah, the people are crazy. Well, you don't have to be a doomsday prepper and have that much food in order to have something that you can survive on while the storm is rolling in and you're waiting for it to subside so that you can go outside and evaluate the situation. If you get what I'm saying, I have to be careful what I say. Unfortunately, it, it is what it is. So right now, folks, I want you to ask yourselves, have you been heeding the warnings? Have you been paying attention? Have you done everything that you possibly could do? Because your time is running out. And this could be your last warning. I want people to be prepared. I want people to be ready. I want people to understand what they need to do. That's why I've done all the videos that I have done. I want people to understand the importance of being able to supply food, water, medical, and everything else that goes along with prepping to their families in a time of need when they really do need it. You see, folks, in the end, it comes down to you being prepared. Because I can tell you right now, you can believe whatever you want to believe. If you think that FEMA truck's going to roll into your neighborhood and set up and start supplying you with everything you need, food and water and a shelter and all this kind of stuff. Well, you all remember Katrina? Do I need to say any more? History repeats itself. And if you're talking something on a global scale that affects the whole country, where do you all really think that's going to go? Do you really think FEMA couldn't handle Katrina in Louisiana? 
You think they're going to be able to handle the whole country? Think about that, folks. It doesn't really take a rocket scientist to figure this out. It's very simple. You go to the store. If you need one thing of canned goods, if, if, say you're going in, you're going to buy a, a can of green beans. Buy two. It's very simple. If you need, you know, potatoes, buy two. If you're buying, you know, you wanted to do some nice rice or something for dinner that night or something, buy two. If you can afford to. <clears throat> the whole fact of the matter is, it's what you can afford nowadays because as I've been preaching since I started this channel a very, very long time ago, you know, I mean, the thing of it is, is you have to be prepared and you just have to start putting away the goods that you need, what you eat. Don't buy stuff you're not going to eat. If you're not going to eat it, don't buy it. Don't waste the money. Why? So you can say you have it. That isn't no good. That does no good to you, your family, or anything else. If anything, you want to make sure that what you are doing is you're putting in what you are going to use. You put your money into what you want. You put your money into what your family needs. And you start with what's going to get them through and what's going to make them survive. You see, folks, because you don't want to just go out and buy, you know, junk food or all this kind of stuff. You, you want to make sure that you have a good balanced rotation of your meals. That's why a lot of preppers prep rice because you can do a million and one things with rice. You really can. You know, instant uh, mashed potatoes. That's another one. You have to know how to store these products. All right. Beans. Beans is another big one. You know, rice and beans goes a long way. And then you can filter in your canned meats, canned vegetables, whatever else. Maybe it's freeze dried stuff. Whatever you can do, whatever you can afford, that's what you have to start doing. And that's what you have to start doing right now, right this minute. You need to start making a plan, making a list, and, st and start to hit the stores. Excuse me. And start hitting the stores. Because literally, folks, it is like Christmas time inside these stores. <clears throat>